if you're just joining us now, we have about a minute. If you could take the poll so I can understand where everybody um, is coming from with social media. And then also say um, what business or organization you're representing today in the chat box. That would be awesome. Um, and right now it's noon, so I'm going to just jump right in. Um, so take the poll and then say what organization you're representing in the chat box. And I'm just going to run through quickly since we only have a half an hour. We're trying to keep it short today. Um, and I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Jessica Ramey, a waste reduction coordinator for Marion County Environmental Services. Um, just a small percentage of my job at social media, but um, I just wanted to share some tips with you about environmentalism and social media and some just quick tips. Uh, and then also this is going to be recorded and we are sharing that um, with all the participants today. So uh, don't feel like you need to keep notes or, or anything like that. Also, I'm going to be muting everybody right now. Um, and then if you could save your questions for the end, I'm going to try to keep the presentation down to 30 minutes, but we should have some time at the end for a few questions. So I'll try to stay um, here as well to answer those. So um, I'll share this uh, contact information um, with you uh, both at the end of this presentation and then also the email later. So essentially what we're going to do is go over why Marion County uh, Environmental Services uses social media as well as um, how it works globally and why people have been using this for environmental practices. And then what is that crazy Facebook algorithm that everybody's trying to figure out? I think it's really helpful to understand the nuts and bolts of how Facebook, of Facebook works so we can kind of figure out how to post and um, stay relevant. And then also we're going to talk about engagement and telling your story as a business and a brand, as well as um, how to post, how to keep it timely, all of that stuff. And then we'll have some time for questions. So Marion County Environmental Services, we use um, social media a little bit differently than a lot of other government agencies do, um, even in Marion County. But what we know is it's a great way to engage the community about waste prevention issues, especially in real time. So I can know exactly what's going to be resonating with um, our um, residents, what, what's on their minds. If I'm getting lots of questions about recycling, I'll know then for our outreach, we need to touch on certain things a little bit more. Um, and it's, it's a really great way to build relationships. We also promote our events and our classes and our programs through that. Um, currently, we have two main programs, the Mass Recycler class, which is outreach for our residents. We have EarthWise Business Account um, or uh, program, which is a business networking program that a lot of you are involved with already. Um, and then we also do other things like swaps and events um, and zero waste activities. We also really love to celebrate our wins with people um, as, as well as their wins. So for instance, we might have an Earthwise business that Rachel knows just posted something on their social media. Maybe they got an award or um, they're doing a good deed in the community. We want to know about those things. So if you know things like that, feel free to share them with us and we can share them with our, um, in our reach. Um, so we have about 7,000 followers for our Marion County Environmental Services page. We've been around for um, a long time, uh, at least uh, 2010, I'm guessing, for social media. So um, if we can help leverage our um, followers, that's great. Um, and then also we try to um, reach our uh, standards with the EQ uh, Department of Environmental Quality has um, laws out for us to opportunity to recycle and uh, let people know about that opportunity as well as waste prevention. So it's just another method, another tool in our tool belt to communicate with people. Um, and so let's just start um, jumping into how people use it globally. So from anything from an individual like Greta Thunberg at the age of 15 who decided to um, take it to the streets that she was really upset about climate action and that her, um, her parents, her teachers weren't listening to her generation. So she ended up starting a, a climate strike um, using a hashtag uh, for 
kids her age, it was um, Fridays for Future, essentially. And so she started this strike and then other people started following in only through social media, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, she later went um, to the Swedish Parliament. She went to the United Nations Climate um, Conference and then to the mm -hmm. um, UN Summit where she had the How Dare You famous uh, speech that she presented to people. So it's a really great way for any individual to take action and then snowball their their passion into um, connecting with other people. Uh, another great example of this is the stop sucking movement of plastic straws. Um, when a marine biologist in 2015 went and was tagging um, sea turtles, he ended up noticing um, that there was a piece of plastic um, and he and his crew. And so they removed it from the sea turtle and that video went completely viral with 30.7 million people just on YouTube following that. So from there, it built to this giant movement of people caring about plastics in the ocean. While uh, straws aren't the biggest issue uh, in our oceans, it became this um, icon of cause and effect of what we're doing and how we're purchasing things and then how it gets thrown away and discarded that cause and effect um, just hit it globally so it's another great example of how as an individual you can make an impact and then also it's amazing for businesses in general so a lot of people are um, familiar with toms who sell, sell shoes they have a one-for-one -one, um, kind of purchasing that they've set up. So essentially, if anybody purchases a pair of shoes, they're going to give a pair of shoes to a needy person. So they believe that, you know, um, not only does it help people um, protect their feet, but, you know, um, it, it, it can have this huge impact in this world of, of kind of um, helping equality um, and equity and accessibility, essentially, for um, clothing and shoes. So they started this amazing campaign uh, that uh, just told people to take a picture and put it on Instagram and then um, put the hashtag on it um, one day without shoes, which or without shoes, uh, their campaigns one day without shoes. And then they would then for every post, every image on Instagram that had that hashtag, they would give away a free pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. So they started this um, and they kept doing it year after year to celebrate and nobody had to purchase anything at all. So it was a really cool way to not only leverage who knows about their company by not even buying a pair of shoes. I could see that friends are posting this thing. I'm like, what's going on, you know? And then I want to know more about Tom. So what a great way to spread that sustainability and then also have a giant impact on the community. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about the logarithm right now um, and why social media is important. So uh, essentially traditional media, it's very one-on-one -on -one kind of conversation. You know, if you buy a paper, you're going to look at the stories there, see if they resonate. Possibly if they do, you might talk to a neighbor about that or um, your family member about that. But it's a very um, limited kind of interaction. Instead, social media is a very... Um, ripple effect, snowball effect, um, amazing action where it's, it becomes much more or, um, democratic essentially. So if nobody is buying a paper, you can um, participate for free. And then if something resonates with me, I'm gonna share it with my friends. I'm gonna comment it. And that's going to be um, just you know, promoted more to other people. So it's a, it's a networking opportunity that you don't even have to know these people and you could start connecting. Um, the logarithm is really interesting. So in 2018 and prior, uh, Facebook really got a bad rap for their logarithm, not being transparent. Um, even to some extent, people were saying that they were deceptive and they're only, you know, making people more depressed or whatever. So Facebook kind of um, started looking at this and wanted to get ahead of it. So essentially what Facebook says their mission is to do is to help people connect with the stories that matter to them most. And what they realize is we are throwing out so much content on a daily basis that people just don't have time to sift through all of that content. So what Facebook's trying to do is um, 
realize how much of that you actually want to see and how much of that actually resonates with you. Is that important content that you actually care about? And if it's, you don't care about it, they're kind of the tastemakers to some extent. They're just not going to show it to you. So they started um, talking about how they rank certain posts. And what they're looking at is who's posted it. If it's a friend or family member, you're probably going to care about that post a lot more than you would if it was somebody you didn't know. When it's posted, that timely um, nature of a post. So if you're talking about an event that's just happened, uh, you know, last night, oh, there was a sonic boom. Does anybody know where that originated from? That would be a timely post that somebody would want to see right then and probably wouldn't matter, you know, 24 hours later after that post. Um, and then interactions with the post. Every time you like a post, every time you don't like a post every time you um, write or um, share the post that is your vote you are giving that um, more power essentially and saying that's something that you enjoy or you're looking at and you're interacting with as well as the type of content so not only is it important who posted it so perhaps there's a friend of mine who's getting married that you know i haven't seen for 20 years but a marriage is a big deal so i kind of want to see that information um, versus my best friend who's posting her dinner every single day. I care about my best friend. Um, and I typically have a stronger relationship with that person. But a marriage might be, you know, weighed a little bit um, stronger. So Facebook's really trying to figure out how these social interactions work. And with that, every single post has a score attached to it. And not only that, but that score is unique to you. So what that's saying is, um, based on their logarithm, they can predict how you feel about that content. And what they end up doing is every single time you're logging in to your feed, Facebook is going to put that in an order from how relevant it is from the most relevant at the top, their prediction of how much you're gonna love that content, versus least relevant. So for instance, if there is um, a post from a publisher that has a score of 1.4, a family member, you've got a score for you that's a 1.3, and then a friend's post, maybe it's not that very engaging to people, it's a score of 0.8, um, they're going to put that in order every single time you go to your feed. So um, that's true of, you know, I'm logging in my feed now, I, they're going to show me the most recent and um, uh, high scoring content first and then maybe I'll come back an, an hour later and they're going to show me new content and organize that again. So it's really, it's really interesting to see this and how they're more transparent. They've also started um, having people take surveys. They're kind of their control uh, group of saying, you know, I'm going to show you what Facebook thinks and predicts is, is what you, the content you want to see and you as the control group get to put it into a different order or maybe it is the same but how well did Facebook predict what you want to see first so it's it's a very interesting way of looking at things um, and then Facebook also started in 2018 and beyond started adding more controls for people so not only can you like and comment on things but you can follow and unfriend people um, if you don't like that content that, you know, maybe somebody's putting out really negative content that does not uh, work with your values, definitely unfriend uh, and um, unfollow that person. As well as you can unfollow businesses, you can unfollow um, any organization that you feel that way about. There's also um, hiding posts. So you can even mute somebody for a, a you know, a amount of time if you want or hide their post from your um, feed. And that gives Facebook kind of um, some feedback on what's important for you to see. And then also you can say, I wanna see this person's stuff first. I wanna see this business stuff first. So what's happening now with the new algorithm is that a lot of people are um, interacting with their friends and their family first and seeing less about the businesses. So it's good to ask your business um, followers to say, I wanna see Marion County Environmental Services page first because that's information I trust and I like. So uh, feel free to go through as an individual and do those kind of things, but then also ask your followers to do those things. 
So essentially, this is what's happening every single time that you're posting content for your business or for um, yourself. You're going to post a uh, something, you're going to post content, and then Facebook is going to say, okay, do, uh, does that person or does that business's friends like that or their followers, their tight, tight group of people, do they like that content? If they don't like that content, it goes to never, never land. Nobody ever gets to see it again, essentially. It's um, dead on arrival. But if people do like it, then they're going to keep pushing it forward. Then it's kind of have the second ripple effect to the second tier of people. Okay, so if that resonates with the employees or the people that interact all the time with that business, how about their friends? Are they going to start liking that, that post? And if that's good, it'll keep moving forward. And once again, if it's not, it will stop dead in its tracks. And um, when I'm talking about this, I'm also just talking about the organic reach, not the um, paid advertisement reach. And Marion County does spend some money on paid advertising only because we know that um, business pages in general are getting less reach. With that said, it depends on what your customers or what your followers want to see. And so there are certain things that we know that are as engaging enough that we don't need to take a paid ad for. But if there's something that's um, important for us to communicate um, that people don't find as engaging, then we might um, put some money behind that message. So essentially it goes into the circular thing. If people um, post and your business posts content that connects with people, you're gonna get more likes. And that more likes is gonna reach um, higher engagement with people. Then you're gonna get a higher reach with people and you're gonna get more followers. So it's this constant thing of putting out content that resonates and how do you do it? So um, that's the tricky part. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about how you engage people and how um, your story of your brand can help connect you with those people. Um, also the time to post content as well as um, hashtag use. So essentially, I think it's really important to figure out who you are as a brand before you even start posting. Because if you don't, it's kind of like that thing of they say, um, you gotta love yourself before you can love others. And I think that's true on, on social media too. You kind of need to figure out who you are before you can start putting out messages. So when you're working on your business, um, I, I think it's really helpful just to go down through an exercise like this. So what are three words that define your business? So like three adjectives, what would you say? Um, what sets your business apart from others? What do your customers love about your company? And what do you dream the world would be like if there was a product, your product, in every single home? So um, I'm gonna post these, like I said, I'm gonna share in this recording so you can go later and spend more time thinking about those things. But really trying to figure out your brand and your message is super important because that's why people are going to connect with you and that's why they're going to trust you. Now, if you don't stick to these things, I mean, you can go out um, on a limb to talk about other things as well and not just your brand, but this is the whole reason why you're here is to connect with people via your business and and um, get people to have a relationship with their, your business. And if you don't know who your business is, then they won't know that either. So how do we communicate that with others? Also, talking about your environmental impact is such a great way to connect with other people that are like-minded. So why do you care about the environment as a business? What do you do differently than others? Um, why would someone help you, um, or what would you do to help someone who's just getting started at this sustainability? You don't have to tell them everything, but maybe you have like a top five list that you want to share with them about how to be sustainable um, and how that applies to your business. Um, what's the environmental impacts of what you do? So maybe um, you're a construction company and you talk about how um, you're thoughtful about the disposal and um, you're thoughtful about how much time you spend on the road and the transportation. Um, those are stories that people really want to hear, especially environmentalists. So environmentalists are a big sector of the buying community. So why not try to approach them and um, speak to them on their level? How does that um, impact relate to others? And then 
what spheres do you touch not directly related to the environment? So perhaps, um, uh, perhaps you're a company that's buying beauty products, for instance, and you are um, you care about sustainability and um, you know not testing on animals or something. What else? would that also that community also be interested in think about that kind of cross marketing as well um, and then once you figure out who you are and what kind of message you want to be telling what are your values be sure to communicate those things and you can be pretty pretty obvious about it so talk about your truths and your values and your mission um, and draw those out in unique ways like maybe you have five values and you touch on one of them um, each week or each month and you have a nice graphic to go along with that. That's a great way to um, chat with people. Um, you could even put out a, um, a poll or something about what, what do you think our values are. That would be interesting as well. Um, also your history. People love history, especially if you have pictures of you as a kid growing up or maybe it's a throwback Thursday um, post. But people love to see that. How, how was your um, brand built? How, how did that start? People love that I, uh, you know, origin kind of story. Also, people love behind the scenes. Show us the nitty gritty of stuff. Don't make it beautiful necessarily, but show us the real authentic um, you know, day of, of your business. Um, show us the piles of havers that you need to go through um, to answer questions for people or the applications or whatever it is. People like to see that kind of detail. Also, you know, don't assume that people know your products. Don't assume people know anything about your company. So the more you can talk to them about that and um, be um, authentic and, and be transparent about it, the better you're going to be. Also, it doesn't hurt to put out curated content. So perhaps there's another um, company that does something similar or another agency. Feel free to share what they do because what's going to happen is, is you're going to have um, that leverage and then they might share that or say thank you and you'll attract new people to um, your social media. And as well as reviews. It's absolutely okay to talk about you know, why you love using this one contractor or um, going to this one car wash that's environmentally friendly or whatever it might be. And then tips and tutorials are really engaging for people, especially if you can um, highlight it in a story or a video, that is super, super helpful. So um, anytime you can get any kind of video step-by-step um, -step process, people are usually really engaged with that. Um, and then also go to where your customers are. So people are still using a lot of Facebook right now. Um, this is where uh, marketers use marketing tactics to reach their people, but also where people are, where your consumers are. So Facebook, you're gonna have an older demographic. Instagram, you're gonna have a younger demographic. Twitter, you're gonna have a, um, typically a more educated demographic there. Depending upon what, who your consumers are, um, who are your customers? Think about that. And then also think about how you like to tell your story. So um, Marion County Environmental Services, I'm usually doing a lot of the social media. I really like pictures and telling things visually. So I like using Instagram and I like it more than I do it, uh, Twitter. So pick one or two that are going to work for you and focus on those. I think it's better than barely touching um, the accounts and having tons of them. Also, um, when to post on Facebook is really helpful. You can go to Sprout Social to get that information, um, as well as uh, they can break it down by sector for you. And then also call on your crew. This is probably one of the most valuable things you can do. Get your employees, get your friends to talk about what you do. The more um, people do that, the more trust they're going to feel with your business. They're going to feel like, um, they can come to you more so and they'll look at your content way more than if you were just throwing it out yourself. And then also it's really important to try to connect with people um, with audio and visual uh, communications as much as possible. Try not just to um, type in text. People aren't going to really look at that. So try to think of how people learn. They use, uh, most people are audio visual learners. So 
Facebook has a mo much more engagement through um, uh, videos than any other content. So it might seem awkward at first, but people really love seeing your face. They really like um, reading uh, your facial expressions. So try to communicate that way as much as possible. And then also, if you're on Instagram, hashtags are just wonderful. If you're posting content on Instagram without hashtags, you're missing out. Because people search oftentimes with hashtags. And as a business, I would recommend you to do that. Um, search other businesses and, um, and influencers and see what hashtags they're using in your industry and write those down. Keep a log of what you're posting on social media, um, you know, even like in a Google Doc or Word or whatever, and see um, a history of what hashtags are working. So what's happening is through a hashtag is somebody searching um, and connecting with your brand that way. Also, search regularly for um, cross promotions of hashtags. Search for your own hashtags, make your own. Um, it's just a really wonderful way to connect with people. And then um, I just wanna also mention that social media is social, which sounds crazy um, to even state that. But um, for instance, working for a government institution, at one point a lawyer said, don't share content unless it's other government agencies. And I'm like, no, that's not, that's not how social media works, right? So you're building relationships with people. That's what's super important about social media. And these are relationships with strangers. Um, make sure that you are responding to questions if you're getting direct messages from people. Um, if people are asking questions in your um, feed, I've heard from government agencies that don't even answer questions, which is awful. Like, it's like if, if someone calls you on the telephone, of course you'd pick up and you would respond in, in sentences. You wouldn't just hang up on that person. So uh, especially a younger demographic is going to be using social media in a different way than an older demographic. Um, and that younger demographic is going to expect a response. And if not, they'll move on to a different business that will give them that. So try to be thoughtful about how you engage with people and have those really authentic conversations. That's absolutely okay. Um, and then also, if your, your customers are posting about your brand, be sure to share that. That is golden. That is like the best kind of social media that you can do is, is sharing what other people's good reviews are or um, examples. And maybe, it, maybe it's not even a good review. Maybe it's just a question. Post that because if that person had that question, somebody else is going to. And it's a great um, jumping off platform to move on to get other people to ask you questions. So um, this is really super fast because I'm trying to do it in 30 minutes. We have a longer version of this also. So um, here's our account. So be, uh, feel free to follow us on our accounts where we do post our virtual um, events. But also you can go and visit our virtual events at mcrecycles.net and then click on the virtual events link. And from there you can see webinars um, that have been recorded in the past. Rachel's put hers out for Earthwise, which is great. So there's other business oriented topics, as well as um, just individual topics like composting and recycling at home. Um, and then also we have a longer version, like I said, of the social media um, webinar that's an hour long that talks about um, also adding stories as content. And we have a great person, Summer, who's a mass recycler, who's an amazing influencer um, that gave um, tips about that. So check that out if you want more information about stories. Um, and then I am here to answer questions if people have them. I'm happy to do so. Um, oh, J Jenny asked a question about after the program, I'd love to know what program you used to make these slides for the presentation. Okay, so I love Google Slides. I think Google Slides rock. And so um, you can even just look for templates. I used a template for this. And uh, oftentimes they give you different um, free elements as well. So Google Slides, highly recommend it. Um, also, there is a closed captioning service, I guess, as well uh, in the newer um, PowerPoint. We don't have that, unfortunately. So um, I had to go with something else, but um, check that out too if you are using PowerPoint about accessibility because there's always accessible, like we could do so much more to connect with people and we wouldn't want to leave out a population that could be a client or a customer. 
Um, are there more questions? Feel free to put your questions in the group chat if you have them. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, but I'm here to answer them if you want to, to chat. Uh, let me stop sharing the screen too, maybe not. Stop video. Oops, that's not what I want. Um, there we go. Post attendees. I want to see people's faces if I can. <laughs> any questions? Rachel, are you seeing any? I'm not seeing any. I oh, don't. Great, McCall. Looks like we might have one coming in. Okay. Oh, mass published posts. You know, um, that is a great question. You know what? I can unmute you too. Can you unmute can't yourself? Unmute myself, sorry. Okay, perfect. That's great. Perfect. Do that. Um, currently, we don't use a paid subscription, and usually a lot of them are paid. Are you guys using one right now? Um, no, but I have heard about Hootsuite. Yeah, Hootsuite's good. Um, but there's also for businesses, if you have a business page, now there is, um, if you go to Facebook.business, um, I think .creator studio. Yes, I use that. Yeah, that's does, super. And I haven't, I haven't looked into whether I can tap on any other social media, but um, for now, it only does publishes to Facebook and then to Instagram. Yep, and then if you, po if you post to Instagram, you can also share it on Facebook there yes, too. Yes, vice versa, yes. I've yep. done that before. Um, but there are some weird things about when I make a post in Creator Studio on Facebook. Sometimes if I tag someone or post a link in the caption, it won't publish it on um, Instagram or it'll publish it but without a caption. Yeah, um, so okay, Instagram is weird. They don't want you to put links, is. right? If you, have, so, if you have over 10,000 followers, then they'll let you put links. Right. And do you guys have over 10,000? No. Or, no. Okay. I mean, I wish. I mean, that's what we're working towards. That's the ultimate goal. Right. Um, but it, it's silly to me, but I guess I understand why. And then do you guys use Linktree for your, um, for your links then for Instagram? Say that again. Link what? Linktree. <laughs> oh, what's that? So essentially you can put that in your bio and then you can list all your links. Okay. So then you don't have to put them in your caption. Just say link is in the bio. And then that's yeah, like, we'll that before. Yeah. Yeah. Then they click on that and it's easy for them to get to. Okay. It's kind of like a, a I don't know, a table of contents, for instance. Okay, yeah. cool. Like that, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Because we work for the county, we're always looking for free or cheap. <laughs> and so, yeah. 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 We do, um, though, pay for archives um, services because we are a county. We have a whole different thing about um, archiving, so we yes. use archive social for that. And it archives your social media posts? Correct. Huh, okay. Um, but that's because we're a public, you know, you institution. Have to keep yeah, so essentially if somebody did a sense. public information request, they would, you know, uh, okay. that then sense. get that information. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Yeah. All right, I'm not seeing any more. It's good to see your guys' face, Jenny McCulley. That's great. All right, have a great day. Enjoy social media. <laughs> uh, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you.